This hack tip is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hackshop.com. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morse, and today we're checking out more of Maltigo's interface, specifically the Manage tab. So this tab, and if I go over to it real quick, Bam, right there. So you get a whole bunch of options in here. They are full of ways to manage and work with the separate windows on your Maltigo platform. So starting from the right side this time, not the left, but the right, in specifically Maltigo 3.4.1 is this whole section called Windows. So you'll see close all documents, close other documents, overview, palette, properties, detail view, output, and machines over here. Uh, if you want to close or minimize all of your windows, such as this, where I can hit close other documents, it'll specifically close whatever graphs that you have open that you haven't uh, been using that aren't on the top screen right now. So since I haven't saved Snub's graph yet, it'll ask me if I want to save before closing. I can hit cancel, yes or no obviously, so that one's pretty easy to use. You can also choose to maximize any window with this section as well. Uh, for example, if I wanted to, let's see, I have a whole bunch of windows over here on the corner. And if you look way over on the right side, you can see overview, property view, and detail view. So previously you had seen each of these as a separate window over on the right side, all very small. Now if I want to, I can close one with the little X or I can make it minimized again with the little arrows. But I can also maximize it by choosing one of those up here. So right now I have detail and property view open. So for example, if I wanted to, I could open overview. So I can click on overview. There we go. So I can click on overview and then I'll get that graph that you have seen previously as well. Uh, so you can play with all these different window selections to see what each one does. And I'll go into further detail in a future segment. But moving on, uh, there's also a little section all about transforms. So that one is right over on the left side. You have discover transforms, manage transforms, and local transforms. Each of these do something different. If you click on discover transforms, first off, you get Discover Transforms, Advanced, and Background. So I'm just gonna click on Regular Discover Transforms, and I'll let this run for a second. So this is gonna let Maltigo look through various seeds for new transforms that you can then add to your list. It'll let you update, then you can just restart Maltigo and you'll have brand new transforms that you can use. You can also just manually add them if you want to, or you can just run this in the background as a background update as well. So manage transforms, and I'll go ahead and click cancel on that. Manage transforms is going to let you manage known transforms available and add them to your list. If any were publicly made by the community, for example, you may have to accept a disclaimer to be able to use them. And the disclaimer pretty much says like, uh, we're not liable for anything that might break on your computer, obviously. So for example, let's choose this one right here. So it's very, very hard to see, but in blue in the status section, it'll say disclaimer uh, if there is a disclaimer that you need to accept, or it'll say ready if you've already chosen to accept it. So I'm gonna click on this domain to DNS schema. Down here in this section, you'll find more information about that. You can click view disclaimer and accept the disclaimer, whatever it means, and then click close. Definitely read those disclaimers so you know what in the world you're doing. This is also going to list out everything that you want to see as far as uh, the status, the location of each one, the default set, input, and output availability as well. And if you want to, you can sort by each of these so you can look at each thing. Now that's just one tab in here. There's also transform servers over here. This is going to show you the servers used to run your specific transforms. And then lastly, we have sets. So sets are pretty interesting. This lets you group transforms based on name, description, and pretty much whatever else you want to. Uh, so under here, if I wanted to, I could create a new set and I can name it whatever I want. So down on the list of sets over here, I've created Shannon's faves. And what I can do is just like drag and drop whichever ones are my favorite. So for example, I could say mirror email address. I really like that one. I can add it to this list. 
and then I can just grow my list over time and find each transform that I want to based on those separate lists. Pretty cool. Now I'll be right back with some more information about the Manage tab in just a moment. The Hack Shop is Hack 5's premier store for all of your pen testing needs, including one of my favorites, the USB Rubber Ducky, which looks like a flash drive and it types like a keyboard. It can type scripts into a computer ridiculously quickly like this week's favorite from I.S. Chievan. I think that's how you spell it. It's a script that basically adds a printer to the target machine. So this could be crazy useful if you have to add printers to several machines in like an eight hour time period at your job. Hey, there you go. So of course we couldn't do the show without your support, so we would like to thank you with something special. You can use the coupon code SNUBS with any order for your very own signed Hack Tip stickers. And again, thank you so, so much for supporting the show. All right, we're back and we're still on the Manage tab, so I also wanted to mention the Entity section. So this is found way over on the left-hand side, way over there. And it's very similar to the transform section. You can also create new entities just like you can with new transforms. So I'm going to click new entity type. So this lets you choose new entity type or you can also choose advanced. Now I'm going to run through this exactly how to use it in a future episode, but just so you know exists, that's where you can find it. Managing also lets you import and export and create new ones and you can also edit pre-existing ones. If you want to manage, you just click on the middle icon right over here on that select section. Choose import export, create your new one, or I can go down here and I can click those three little dots and I can basically edit to my heart's content. I can change the name, description. I can also add a different icon if I really hate that icon showing up for my note or whatever I want. If you have created new ones, uh, new notes, anything like that, and I'll close out of here, you can find notes over in the center right here. You can also show additional labels and you can show custom link labels, transform link labels, and you can also uh, choose to show property effect appearances. Uh, there's a ton more information available as well under Maltigo if you go to Paterva's website for this, but that's basically how the Manage tab works. So it's very, very useful, especially if you uh, want to use those tabs over on the corner, all those different smaller panes like the overview section, the detail view. Detail view is really, really fun. It's one of my favorites. Let me show you one thing I really like to do. So I can click on detail view and let's choose hack5.org. And then I will choose to, I'm gonna minimize these other two so you can really see the detail view. Okay, so I can choose relationships, outgoing, that's pretty cool, all right. Let's go down to something a little bit more interesting. How about hack5.org server? So this shows you little snippets from the website. So I can see everything from, there we go. So this is going to show me the relationships of hack5.org. Uh, snubs at hack5.org is another node that I've included in this graph. If I scroll down a little bit though, you'll see all these cool little snippets from the actual website. So it lists a ton of information straight from the website that you can basically pick up and do whatever you want with. And then way down at the bottom, you get generator details. So this is gonna show you basically when you created the transform, the generation date, uh, what the actual transform was that generated it, and any kind of sources. So where it's coming from as far as its parent node, you can also get a second source if you have multiple ones going to the same child. So I thought that was pretty interesting and I felt it, it was really useful, especially if you have a huge graph, so lots and lots of information coming back and forth. Let me know what you guys think below. You can send me a comment below or you can email us tips at hack5.org. Make sure to check out our sister show as well, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. And I'll be there reminding you to trust your Technolust.